Well, all right, welcome back, folks. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we're going to be reviewing Joe Hill's first novel, Heart-Shaped Box. All right, let's just get the let's just get it out of the way right from the beginning. Most of you all know that Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King. He just writes under his um, first and middle name, Joe Hill King. I think his name is Joe Hill King. So he just writes under his first middle name. He leaves the King off. I want to talk a little bit about that as we get going. You know, this book is called The Heart-Shaped Box. It's got a lot of references to the rock band Nirvana. So you'd think that I would come wearing my, uh, you know, Nirvana shirt. Well, I don't have a Nirvana shirt, you know, because I have better taste in music than that. And, you know, so I wore my heart shirt for Heart Shaped Box, you know. You know, I, 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 if you've watched my music reviews, you know I have a huge disliking for the band Nirvana. And so when Joe Hill came out with his first novel here, Heart Shaped Box, Titled after a Nirvana song, I'm like, okay, we've got a big uphill battle, dude. Big uphill battle. So, let's get into the cover. You know, we always talk about the covers first. It's a, it's a, it's a book cover. That's all I got to say about this. It's all right. It's got his name in big, bold type. The title is in big, bold type. The cover has not one damn thing to do with the book. That's all right, though. It's, a, it's still a pretty striking cover. You know, the covers don't always have to do with the book, they, and, and, still, and they can still be average. Anyway, let's talk about Joe Hill a, a little bit. This book came out in 2007. It's his first published novel. A lot of people say Joe Hill only got his writing career because of his daddy, Stephen King. That's the only reason the guy is even published, right? A lot of people think that. Here's the thing. This thing came out in 2007. Joe Hill was born in 1972. He wasn't, wasn't until he was 35 years old that this thing came out. If his dad, if he wanted to be a writer and a published writer, and he wanted to use his daddy's influence, he would have been published way before he was 35 years old. He would have been published at 19. Publishers would have been like, oh, Stephen King's dad, son wants to write books. We don't give a, f if it's dog, we're going to publish it. But no, the dude, to his credit, changed his name to Joe Hill, submitted all of his works as Joe Hill, built his career as Joe Hill from the bottom up, and he, nobody knew that he was Stephen King's son until well after this book had already been published. And, and, and it's 30, I mean, so that, just me knowing enough about the business and just using plain logic, the dude is a phenomenal writer and he's got a phenomenal career all built on his own. Mad props to the guy. Mad props. That being said, here's my Stephen King collection. Right next door to my Stephen King collection is my Joe Hill collection. Anyway, what do, what do I think about this book? This is, uh, for a debut horror novel, this is all right. This thing, uh, it's about this rock star named Jude Coyne, or Judas Coyne. He's kind of an aging rock star. You know, he's in his mid-50s. He's getting older. He's not as famous as he was, but he's been, he's led this life of debauchery. You know, he's got, he's, he, he's just... Like every famous metal band guy, he's just he's just plowed through groupie after groupie after groupie. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's just used one chick after the next after the next. Just use them, toss them aside, don't give a shit. That's the base. That's the setup of the story. The other setup of the story is that he lives in this mansion and he collects a lot of weird stuff. I mean, weird macabre things. You know, he he collects just anything to do with ghosts and goblins and ghouls and evil and satanism he's just got it in his house so you can imagine this house and if you want to 
On YouTube, there is a video of Rob Zombie giving a tour of his gothic mansion. And that's what I picture when I picture this guy's, this Jude Coyne's house is just exactly, looks, looking exactly like that Rob Zombie video. And trust me, just Google Rob Zombie house tour and the video will come up and you'll be like, that's a awesome house and that's a weird ass house. I would live there in a heartbeat and everybody would too. I mean, it's just got some bizarro stuff. And so he just, he collects all this ghoulish stuff. And not only does he collect ghoulish stuff, but he kind of collects gothic girlfriends. Like in his older age, he still can pull these young women in their 20s that are like emo goth chicks. And he just, he has, he's got them laying, he's got them just around and they're just all like major bees and there's one in particular that he's really kind of mostly fond of and um just their interactions and everything i just it's just great it's just like this aging rock star who's no longer really famous but still famous enough to pull you know some really hot chicks gothic emo uh, hot chicks into his life and but he's missing something but he, he he gets talked into buying this old suit from uh, a dead guy, a dead guy's suit. Basically, that's what it is. Like, the guy is dead. This was his favorite suit. Anyway, he gets the suit to the house, and immediately, immediately, weird things start happening around the suit. Well, it turns out, and then here's the thing. We'll get to we'll get to a little bit of what the suit is about, but one of the things I noticed about this Joe Hill book was he wastes no time. He wastes no time in getting the suit to the house. I mean, within a couple chapters, the suit is there in his house causing mayhem right from the get-go. You know, if you read a Stephen King novel, like I'm reading Bag of Bones right now, we're 300 pages into a 700-page novel, and the supernatural stuff still hasn't really showed up yet. I mean, we're talking, in the Bag of Bones, we're talking about this guy's career as a writer, this all of his missteps and successes as a writer. You know, we in, a, in the Joe Hell book, we don't get all of that prelude of the uh, all of his career as a heavy metal band guy and uh, all of his missteps. And it's just it's touched at. Whereas in Stephen King, Stephen King kind of goes into the, all of that garrulous backstory. I gotta say, which we love Stephen King for. Don't get me wrong, Bag of Bones. I'm rereading this thing, and I am loving every minute of it. I love the I love all the wordiness of Stephen King. That is not present here in Joe Hill's first novel. The wordiness is not present. I mean, this thing from the get-go, we are right into the supernatural mayhem going on. There is no waste of time. Stuff starts show stuff just starts going bonkers from the get-go. And it stays going bonkers because this suit that this rock star has ordered as this sort of this macabre thing that he can put into his collection is actually haunted by. An, a groupie, a young groupie that the rock star Jude Coyne slept with and just cast aside. Just some girl who was madly in love with him, slept with him a few times as a groupie, and he just didn't care, walked all over her, trampled her little heart, and just um, disappeared on her, and she was left devastated, so devastated that she actually committed suicide. Well, the suit that he's now purchased was is being is haunted by the that girl's stepfather who loved her very much and knew that this rock star had um sort of destroyed her life uh and that's kind of the basis of the story that's pretty much it i won't give anything else it's just a haunted ghost type story like a there's this haunted artifact in his house now this suit and this guy the stepfather of this groupie who committed suicide now wants to haunt the rock star. And that's pretty much it. It's like a haunted house, haunted talisman type story. It's very good, very interesting, very well written, very crisply written, no wasted words. It's different style than his father altogether. Other than the lame Nirv Nirvana-esque title to the book, I loved everything about it. Even though the, the heart-shaped box is the box, it is an actual heart-shaped box that the suit gets mailed to him, thus, and they keep it in that box 
uh, you know, thus the title. Nirvana, though. God, did they ruin rock and roll. Those assholes. I don't actually blame Kurt Cobain or Dave Grohl or the other musician that was part of Nirvana. You know, they're doing what they're doing. I blame all the shits that bought their music and made them famous. That's who I actually blame. I blame all the poor, all the people that got really crap taste in music. You know, now we're on a rant about Nirvana, which needn't be in a book review. But we just are. And, you know, so anyway. What do I give the um, heart-shaped box novel by Joe Hill? I give it a good 8 out of 10. Dynamite. Dynamite debut from Stephen King's son, Joe Hill.